Welcome, everybody, to the 2023 Derby City Classic One Pocket Division. This is round one, and as you see on your screen, we've got Joshua Filler versus Minnesota's great Jesse Angle. I am your host, Scott Frost, a.k.a. The Freezer, and I'm excited for this match. As you see on your screen, I believe that Jesse won the lag. And I don't know how many people know about Jesse Angle, but I can tell you, the young man can really play. I haven't seen a lot of his one pocket game, but I guarantee you, he can pocket the balls, he can play the cue ball and object balls where they need to go. So this young man might surprise Filler just a little bit. Tell you another big factor is winning that lag in a race to three. If you win the lag in the race to three and you carry your breaks, winning each game you break, or if it goes hill hill, you're always breaking on the hill. And we all know how too important that is. Just to go over the rules real quick, each player gets a single pocket. Eight balls into your pocket wins the game. Any foul costs you a ball, meaning a scratch, no rail. Move two or more balls, it costs you a foul. Alternate the break. Making a ball and a break is a re-rack. Three foul rule is in effect. Three fouls in a rule is a loss of game. It's been a long time since I've seen that in a tournament like this. And then there's no jump cues. Let's see how good Jesse breaks these balls the first time in game number one of round number one. In my opinion, he's broke the balls very well. I've noticed early on in this tournament already that a lot of players are having a hard time getting that cue ball up high. I know his cue ball is not on the rail where it should be ideally, but he's gotten it high enough to put protection on the purple four. And Filler immediately looking at the long rail kick, taking a foul, and let me talk about his one pocket game. The man is full of firepower, he doesn't miss, and his cue ball is just awesome. So this should be a great match. Of course, Filler could beat Jesse 3 to nothing in 45 minutes, or it could be a real close match. Either way, I expect some good pool out of both of these guys. Filler taking a foul. Well controlled, right? that cue ball gets a hair high or a hair low of that four, Jesse's going to have a look at the orange five. So I think they're looking for a coin to mark it up for Filler's foul that he's taken. Or maybe they both just went to have some dinner. I don't, okay, no, he's back. Now if I'm Jesse... What are my options? I'm immediately looking at thinning the one, coming, bringing the cue ball one rail all the way back down to kind of where it was. I think his biggest concern is that stripe near Josh's pocket, right? So if you leave that cue ball up table, you know Josh might take a wing at that stripe. You really don't want him shooting. So even if Jesse had to take a foul and put him back where he was, if a guy doesn't like where he is the first time, put him back. Okay, this is okay. Just okay, in my opinion. And here's why. You bring him up here, you can lose your position. Josh can easily kick at the four, right? That four is working for you. And he's already looking at kicking the four. If you bring him down much further, you're holding and protecting your position. Much easier to execute what Jesse did, but also much easier to get out of. Just want to hold your position as long as you can. This is the problem. He's reversed it practically in one shot. And he actually gave Jesse that look like, hey, dude, this is Josh Filler you're messing with. Yeah, so I think that was a mistake right there. If it was too tough to execute coming off the one and bring the cue ball all the way down behind the pile, protecting the purple four, then take a foul. Just take a foul and do it. 
know, Jesse looking at the one. And I don't know if it lays true or not, but he's possibly looking to bank the one, one rail, swing the cue ball around three rails. Takes an accurate hit. If you hit it too thin, it can be disaster. If you hit it too thick, it could be disaster. And it's also got to take good speed. He's got other options, too. He could kick at the 12 here. If he kicks to the top side at the 12 here, the cue ball's going into the 6 and 3. I don't think he's got a lot of risk there. He could get something in front of his hole that way. Is he two railing at this? That's really dangerous because you're leaving filler on the wrong side of the table. In order to two rail this, you've got to use low. Yeah, okay, he played the three railer. He actually did really well. He, he did what is most important in this game and that's take control and care of the cue ball that's what he's done so i think that's nicely done so instead of the four being the one he needed to protect it's now the one so he's kind of got himself back in a in a positive position here josh looking at the four could clip off of the edge of the four. I don't know if he can see enough of it to chip the four and play the cue ball one rail behind the one. Kind of surprised that he's looking to take a kick here. At worst, you could just slam the four into the five and play the up table game, but Josh doesn't like playing the up table game. He's such an aggressive player. He wants to play the down table game. Just trying to understand what he's going to do here. Is he trying to kick to the backside of the one with a little speed? Oh, and this is what he's done. How did he do? Like, how did he do? Uh, he completely covered Jesse up on the four once again. And uh, he's left Jesse in a real awkward position. Yeah, a couple of very good shots from Filler right out of the gate, which sends a message, right? That always sends a message to your opponent that this guy's ready to play. You better be ready to play. I don't know if Jesse's looking at something aggressive with this one, like possibly splashing the stack with it, stunning his cue ball below the four. It's not terrible if you know you can get good contact. Utilize the four to block everything. It's definitely a powerful shot. I don't even see anything real good that's defensive because he's completely cut from everything. This is okay. It's not terrible. I don't mind him doing this, and I can't fault him for doing this. It's nicely controlled. It keeps Josh off, Josh off of anything aggressive. Excuse me. Keeps him completely off of anything real aggressive. Unless Josh wants to kick to the top side of the stripe. Which is something he would do, and that's something he's looking at. Yeah. How did he do? What a hit. What a hit. And my question is, would Josh have shot that against me or another player that he knows? I'm wondering if he knows Jesse. And it might be better that he doesn't, but you really can't take Jesse for granted. He's a great young player. He's been around actually quite a while, and I guess he's not as young as I would say anymore. Uh probably in his early 30s but uh, haven't seen him on the scene as much in the last few years but look at this turnaround Josh has made 
off of Jesse's break in just three or four innings. Completely masterful, really. He's executed every shot that he's played perfect. And Jesse might have an opportunity to one rail the eight and swing the cue all three rails behind the 12. Just takes so much control. He wants to just bunt the five and stick him to the stack. Or this way as well. But the problem with this is that you're putting Josh on the wrong side of the stack. He bumped the 10. It didn't bump the three. Therefore, it's not a foul. You've got to move two or more. So I'm against this. I'm typically always against this. Not a lot of good things can come from this. At worst, Josh can come off of the stripe nearest the cue ball, pushing everything to his side and send the cue ball up in the top corner. At minimum, he can come off of the five and put the cue ball up in the top corner. When I say I'm against it, what I what I mean by that is common note, common rule in the game is that you just want to you'd never want to keep a top player on the wrong side of the pile at all costs. Take a foul if you have to. So he's elected to go this route. Cue ball speeds a little off. I'd like to have gotten it closer to frozen or in the jaws up there. What does that stripe look like near the 15? Does it carry him to his hole? He's looking at it. I think it might be going a hair high. If it is going a hair high, he would need to draw it. Pretty good shot. Awful passive, though. I'm afraid that Josh is going to have a real good opportunity here. He can bank the 14. I don't know that he can bank it clean. I think he can bank it clean. I think he can twist it. He's going to the two. Two rail on the two, sending the cue ball back up. Oh, I apologize. This angle throws me off a little bit, guys. So take it as what it is. Face value. What a hit on the five. I don't know if Josh, I don't know if Jesse could see the five. Josh has played a great shot, cutting him off, utilizing the eight as well. Okay, he could see the edge of the five. He's put it down. It's not great, right? Anytime you've got that cue ball out in the open against a world-class player like Filler, he's gonna he's gonna bring the pain. He's going towards the 12 here for that straight back. Oh, he's hit it a little heavy. Whoa, it's dove in. He's got it down. Now he's got options, but I think the eight is the most natural option. Carries position on any of these four balls next. Clean. And he's missed the ball. He's hit it to the rail just a fraction. Big opportunity for Jesse to try and get out of this death trap that he was in. I'm seeing a little, and like I said, I haven't seen Jesse play one pocket really I just know how great a rotation player he is uh, but I would assume he can play the game because he's a cueist uh, pockets balls well and his cue balls always been really good but it seems I've seen a couple little shots that kind of delve into the side of inexperience It's tough to tell here, but what about two railing 14 and just following the cue ball into the eight? 
or can he rip these? Watch for the kiss. Yeah, that's going to hurt. That's going to hurt. Filler will cut the seven, go into these balls. Be guaranteed some type of a shot. I take that back. He hit it a little bit thicker than intended, I believe. The seven barely fell. He's going to have to do something with the 15 here. He can go rail, rail first on this 15. Softly. And what ends up happening is you'll end up leaving the cue on behind the 15 parallel on that bottom rail. Is he going at the combination? Oh boy. Wow. This was loose. Very loose. That was a tough combination to begin with. And to put high inside English on it for position made it, I mean, it made it 50% more difficult. Very surprised at that. But once again, let's go back to what I said. I wonder if he's taking Jesse a little bit for granted. Let's see what Jesse can do here, but I expect him to get all these balls. And as soon as I say that, okay, he's good. He could go up to the stripe that's nearest the 14, just catch that ball heavy, run into it. Should be just fine. Even going to the 13 and that stripe. Well, you got to go into a both. You've got to be able to split them. So I'm really surprised at that. Felt like he knew that he had to put some inside English on that there in order to come away with a shot. That was more like he was just cinching the ball. So I didn't expect that. I don't know if the 13 banks, the three might have it covered. Therefore, do you look at banking the three? <clears throat> I think you've got to stay aggressive here. Somehow, some way. If you can knock something down here, they're still all open. Can't fault him for two railing the six out and just playing the cue ball down on the bottom rail, but he's still in a position where if he can get something close and maybe get the cue ball up there around the two, he would be in a real good position. I don't know if he can cross the six with low outside and come around the 14. I don't know if he can bank the 13 short. Could just roll the two in. That's not terrible. Yeah, this isn't terrible. Well, the selection wasn't terrible. The execution was questionable. Filler seems to be in complete go mode. So it'll be interesting to see what he chooses here. Is he looking at the one off the six? Oh, he sure is. Nothing to it. I think you've got to move the 14 here as much as he probably doesn't want to. Or a conventional player would move it. And yeah, that's what he's doing. So in game number one, Filler's got four. Jesse has two. The balls are headed up table, or actually are pretty much up table. I think Jesse's just got to play something passive here, but the most important thing is to get that cue ball on the rail. Do not want to leave it out where it's at against Filler. Not terrible. 
I mean, it's not terrible. Yes, I see the four. Filler can go at that right away. And it looks to be pretty free if he catches it full. You just don't want to hit this thin. You could come behind the three if you do. That ball seems to want to dive in right at the end, but it stayed straight. He's left a shot. It's kind of a blind shot. He's a little blind to the edge or the spot that he needs to hit, so he's got options here. Do you want to go forward or do you just want to try and pocket this ball with a little low and get on the nine? You could go forward and play the bank next as well. So it's all about your options. I don't know how steep he is here. Boy, he's really elevating. He's definitely going to go to the nine next. Hit that into the bottom rail. Filler going down to this quickly. Come up for the nine here if you catch this full with a lot of spin, like so. Nicely done. What's that to get off the rail? Well, he got off the rail. I don't know that he can even see the edge of the nine that he needs to see. Cross the 11 over or bank it to your hole here. Yeah, that's a good decision. Pretty good cue ball as well. Jesse's got an opportunity to bank at this nine. He's six to two behind in this game. I think you've got to go. You've got to stay aggressive. You can't you can't play a guy like this without staying aggressive. I don't think you're going to outmove him. You're probably not going to outshoot him, but you've got to stay aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if that does it. The only reason I say that is you just don't want to give this guy opportunities. And Josh is just going to punt this six back up towards his side and lay the cue ball down, making things real difficult. So Jesse had a much easier bank at the nine. Cue ball was going into the three. And there was nothing threatening Josh's pocket at that time. And now Jesse's looking at a much tougher situation, right? So. You, it's such a percentage game, and when the percentage arises that you've got to go, you've got to go. Doesn't mean you're going to make the ball. Doesn't mean you're going to execute it. When percentages say that it'll work, then you've got to play it, whether it works or not. Just feel like this is going to be tough to keep filler off of some type of a bank. Yeah, I mean, he's got a two-railer on the nine at worst or straight back on the 11. Oh, he's hit it pretty well. It's come short. It's come short. This cross is pocketable, I believe. I know he's got to hit it pretty heavy, pretty full. Maybe a touch of inside. Just for you guys at home that don't play the game as much, you don't need a lot of English on this. It's actually more where you hit the 11 than it is what type of English. Oh, he's hit it really nice. Nice heavy hit. Creeping back into this game. Sometimes super simple things just seem pointless, but they're very effective. And here, I would consider just rolling to the rolling the nine to the top side. Just roll it over. He can play the six. I do like that. I'm just pointing out options. That nine could be a problem later, right? So you could just bunt it over to the top rail. 
like to snooker him on the 10 here if he's pocketing this 6. Going into the 2. Uh, I, I thought he would draw that. Might still have him hooked. Josh is acting like he's got him hooked. So the shot Jesse shot was much more effective than mine that I was talking about. A lot easier to snooker him than it looked from my angle. It's a little tricky here. You can't just tick you off the bottom of the 10. You're going to leave filler a cut on the 9 or possibly even straight in on the 10. So you might want to just come to the left side of this 10 and come to the bottom rail nice and soft. Now, I mean very soft, right? I'm just talking ticky off the 10 and leave him right here by this first diamond almost. I think that's what he's doing. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I was insinuating is filler going to look at crossing this low outside drawing the cue ball back two rails behind the 14 he's also possibly got the two railer on the two he can draw that I believe and miss the three mature play right there I'll tell you what, I've noticed a lot more maturity in Josh's one-pocket game. I'm sure a lot of that's come from playing great players. He's defeated Tony Chohan for the money at least once. Actually, I believe twice now. Both aggressive players, so I think that Tony's style suits Filler's game. I would be interested to see how Filler would play somebody that can squeeze a little bit more plus shoot. But right now we're here. Uh, I like that shot as well. Really wants that cue ball to carry and I think it's carried enough to make things difficult on Jesse. I'm not too concerned about it, but what does the 11-10 look like to Josh's hole? It kind of forces Jesse to do something completely defensive. Unless he can see that stripe. Yeah, he's got to move those balls. Good speed, it looks like here. Yeah. Good enough. Yeah, a little weak. He did get the two to his side, looming in a dangerous position. Gives Jesse something to think about if he wants to try and long rail something. Is he looking at banking the 14 here? Here's the only concern about this bank is you can get one or possibly lose the game from it. I don't know that it carries position unless he's trying to get behind the two. I think he's trying to come around or come out. Yeah, and that's what he's tried to do. And that's kind of what I meant there, right? You, I think Josh can cross at this ball, but you can get one or possibly risk losing the game. Another mature shot by Josh, which I've, I've not seen as much of, but I am lately, where he's playing more of the right shot. Notice the cue ball. Oh, he's very accurate with that cue ball. A lot of people give him so much credit for his shooting ability and overlook how good his cue ball actually is. Forcing Jesse to roll this. Anything could happen. I believe he's left a two railer. At minimum. Tough to tell from my angle. I 
just don't know what he can do with the cue ball. If he can't get the cue ball out of that area, he might not shoot it. And he doesn't have to shoot it, right? He's leading six balls to three. Just got to watch out for leaving Jesse the two here. Yeah, look at the cue ball. He's done pretty good. Even though be it the object ball isn't where we would want it to be if we were Josh the cue ball is right where it needs to be Josh has got choices here excuse me Jesse's got decisions to make he's so flat on this too I don't think he can cut at it if he does I think he risks selling out the 14 might have a cut on the 11 but I think he risks also selling out the 14 or possibly the 2. I think the 2's got him snookered on the 14, so I don't even know that he can do anything with the 14. So he's in a little bit of a spot. He could rub off the bottom edge of the 2 on our screen and just come to this rail, which is touchy. If he decided to and he felt good about it, I guess he could take an opportunity to swing at the two now and just go all out and commit on the shot, right? And if he commits on the shot, he's going to have a bank on the 14, gets him back into the game. But if he doesn't put it down, he loses the game. I don't know if he's ready to risk that yet. He's at the two. Yeah, here's the problem. You either got to shoot at pocket speed to actually make the ball or don't shoot it at all because you're taking half your focus away. If you're going to hit it hard like that, then really most of what you're worried about is the cue ball when in all reality you've left a shot anyway. So if you're going to go ahead and go commit to pocketing the ball, especially in that situation. Josh has hit it long. Jesse a little fortunate there. Dodged a bullet. But going back to the two guys. If you think you're a little bit above 50% to pocket that ball, go ahead and bear down and focus on draining it. Focus on knocking it down. It's going to carry position to the 14 and get you back in the game. Don't risk the game to get one. And Josh might cut this 14. Actually, I'm pretty sure he's going to cut this 14. I feel like Jesse overspun that a little bit. Could bank at this ball. Yeah, he could bank at the ball that's up near set 10. extension out is left-handed so he's gonna have to reach he's gonna play this short or using some kill oh gosh he's hit it excellent wow what a hit notice the speed too such a tough shot to execute the way he did he made it look so easy I might shoot the two here just because it's closer to the cue ball and I don't shoot like Josh Filler does anymore, or never did. Filler going for this. That's possibly why I would have shot the two, though. It's closer to the cue ball. You can be a little bit more accurate. Just got a couple choices here. He could two rail at the 10, which I think is what he's got to do. Or he could two rail kick the 14 to his side. I think you've got to try and really try and knock this down. Float the cue ball over and take the cut on the 11. I think that's going to be long, way long. I 
Josh going to take the 11 out. Note the cue ball. He didn't want to catch the two like he did. Jesse's got a bank on the three. I don't know that he's seen it yet, but he has now. And once again, if you can knock this down, you might get a cut on the 10 or the 11. Get you back in this game. I would not be concerned about position. When you're in this type of situation, you're just trying to get the three close or knock it down. You can't really be concerned about anything else. You've got to commit to the shot. Nice. Way overcut it. That's going to cost him. So Jesse Engel is going to lose game number one. Filler takes a 1-0 lead. This is the first round of the 2023 Derby City Classic in the One Pocket Division. Thank you to our sponsors, Bad Boys Billiards, Hustling USA Clothing Company, Handcrafted JB Custom Cases, Jerry Olivier Custom Cues, and Lippman Lights, the best in the business. Do us a favor also, like and subscribe, Railbird TV, bringing it to you live and free. Filter to break. This is a pretty good break. I'd take this break just about every time, I believe. I don't know if Jesse can get to the 13 or not. But even if he can, I don't know what he can do with it. Note that cue ball high again, but he's got protection everywhere. The 7, 6, 13 are looming. The 4's open. The 1's open. What does Jesse see? What does he have? Can he shoot the purple 4 and go forward trying to nip in behind these balls no I think he's shooting okay he's taking a foul he needs it to roll it's a pretty good shot actually he's going to live to fight another day Filter could just do the same thing back I think he can kick below the four one rail I don't know that he wants to do that. He might be a little concerned about leaving the gap between the stack and the four. Looking to see if he can swerve that 13. I don't know that you can being so close. Maybe he's got a good look at it. Oh, he, he overcooked it. Did he get away with that? Does the 13 bank? I don't know. I feel like he might be able to kill that 13 bank. Or twist it. He can cut the four. But there's no future. There's not much in front of it if you do. Looking at the 7, can he whack the 7 into the pile and stun the cue all below the 13 and 6? I think it's a little too steep, meaning the seven's going to go a little high up towards the 3 where you're not really going to get the action off the balls that you need. Here's the problem with shooting this 4 is you're just getting 1. Unless you have control and you can come around and get on the 6 bank or something like that. Yeah, he's... Acting like he's going to come this way. Is he going to kill it with left? Coming one, two, three, four rails towards the seven? Boy, it's asking a lot. Uh, he doesn't want to get in a stack here. He's made a nice hit. I think he can bank this seven and carry him into the back of the six. Is he not looking at it? I 
Does he see something? In this? He's not looking at the cross on the seven here. He could go into the back of the six, probably getting position on the six. It's a little bit of inexperience, not, at least not looking at those balls. Maybe it's not on, but at least take a look at it. So I don't know about that shot there. Made a nice cut on the four. You've got a few like filler at, at minimum could probably put them in the stack. Or you can bank the purple four off the balls. Yeah, he chose to go off the stack. <laughs> I guess he's daring his opponent. Let's see what Jesse Engel decides to do here. He's clearly got a shot on the 13. What's to follow? Don't know what's to follow. Does the four play? Does the four ball carom combination of the nine play? If that's the case, you might shoot it now. But boy, I don't know that I'd want to shoot a four ball carom combination for my tournament livelihood. he knows either but it looks close but he's got to catch I believe he's got to catch the bottom edge of the two to throw the 11 towards the nine you don't want to cut the three to the top side of the two well close it was nice nice hit so he's gotten himself out of a jam here I would consider moving the six and seven now. Just make sure you know where to leave the cue ball. I would leave the cue ball possibly if I'm him, probably somewhere right there at that diamond. On the side bottom rail that we're looking at. See, I don't like coming down. This is, this is a little inexperience, I think. Whether Filler decides to bank at the 15 or not, I don't know, but you're letting him look at it. Yeah, I, I would have liked to have seen Jesse double him up there. Yeah, Filler's definitely banking at it. Big mistake by Jesse Engel there. Probably a little bit of inexperience. Not looking at what's going to be next when he leaves the cue ball there. So, uh, Phil are definitely going to take advantage of this situation. Playing for six. Excuse me, playing for six now. And he underhit that a bit. This is the first match of the one pocket tournament. Still getting comfortable with everything. Q-Ball's gotten away from him a little bit. I don't think he wanted that much distance. I think he wanted to play the 13 next. Can he shoot the 3 and split the 14-11 to get a shot on the 4? 14 plays. Playing for 4. Now he's got decisions to make. Can he go into the 2? If not, somehow get to the 13 or 6. Oh, wow. What a play that was. Very nicely controlled. Playing for 3. Looking to take a cut on the 1. Could come all the way over and play the combination if you felt like it. That's what he's doing. Didn't want to be right there on the rail. How'd he do? Straight shooter, Josh Filler. Looking to take a two to nothing lead. 
in the round number one of the Derby City Classic. He's counting the balls. Jesse Engel is going to give it to you. There we go. Diamond Billiard Products Incorporated. Great sponsor. Ian Simonis, Simonis Cloth, Aramith Billiard Balls, Outsville Rack, AccuStats Video Productions, and Master Billiard Chalk. All the best in the business. I am your host, Scott Frost, a.k.a. The Freezer. Let's see how Jesse hits this break. I don't know that Jesse plays a lot of one pocket in his defense. And if you don't play a lot of one pocket, it's not real easy, right? It, it might look easy or it might look slow. It's not easy. You've got to you've got to play the game to see the shots. He's got the cue ball out there quite a ways. Uh, he's caught the two. He's caught the two, which cost a scratch. Jesse immediately going to owe one, and I'm pretty certain Filler's going to stay aggressive here, shooting the two. I think he's, he's going to look to come to the bottom rail and get some type of shot on the 3-4, but I don't know that the angle tells me that he can do that because he's got to hit it with some type of pace. Okay, he's got a plan. Well, the first thing he should do is pull the cue ball back. He's about three inches over the line there you go so I think he's gonna rip the 11 use the one towards his pocket that's what he's done but he's caught the point he doesn't want that to drop if you're Jesse pretty cold there So Jesse is even. Does have a look at the one here. So for you folks at home, when you're playing this one and it doesn't have a clear path to a pocket, you always want to play it to something with accuracy. In other words, if you're you're not expecting to make it, but if you're playing the one into the three into the seven, find the spot that you're trying to play the one into. You'll be surprised more often than not, you get closer than you think you're going to get with that shot. This is well done. Very good. Very, very good. I'd like to see Jesse win a game. Just to see Josh's reaction and see if he tightens up a little bit, shows the young man some respect. <laughs> I keep calling Jesse a young man, and Filler is what, 22? Maturity in Filler's game just sometimes has me thinking that he's much older than he is. Trying to see what he is looking at. Okay, I don't I don't see what he sees here. Typically, I can pick it off, but I'm not seeing it. Unless he's looking to go to the six. Yeah, I didn't see that. Did he get away with that? He did not. I didn't see the dead ball there. I don't think he got away with it. I would hope Jesse can cleanly pocket the three at minimum. Yeah, Josh must have obviously thought he had something dead out of the stack there, but pretty loose shot. I wouldn't call it a sign of disrespect, but I wouldn't call it respectful either. Okay, the one went cleanly. I really expect Jesse to run some balls here. Just get on the 7, don't overthink this. You could actually get on the 10 too, if you want to go forward and just go into the 8 and 7. 
There's nothing actually wrong with that decision. Yeah, but you start putting yourself in positions where you're elevated. Things can get tougher. You have to knock this down. You know you're going to move the eight. Could open everything up here. Okay, that's well done. Now we can come up to the eight or think about this, right? Does the four pass the eight? Do you draw back to the four now? Because here's the problem. If you don't get the angle on the eight that you need, how do you get back to the five and 13? That's okay if you come out, but you don't want to snooker yourself. Just don't come out too far. I would rather just punch right here and get in front of the eight and take what leaves me. Well, that's what he did, and he just flubbered it a little bit, so he underhit it. That could prove very costly. He's a real good player, so a little bit surprised at that execution. Now he's got a decision to make. A lot of players out of frustration might just take on the four ball bank, but note the position of the object balls. If you take on that bank and don't make it, Filler's going to punish you and punish you bad. The last thing you want to do if you're Jesse is bunt the eight away, but you might have to bunt the eight away. If you do something with the four, if you don't bank at it, you're probably going to leave the eight. So you've either got to commit to this bank or you've got to bump the eight away. If, can he see the two? If he could see the two, he could just draw it right behind the 15. But you don't want to come down and let him see the eight. Oh, he's overspun it. Yeah. He's way overspun it. Missed the whole ball going in. A little sign of frustration for Jesse, and I can feel it. I understand it. I've been there. Filler needs eight. And they're all sitting there like tic-tac-toe can he get above the 14 he did the six seven play the four plays the eight plays now do you come down now or do you just play up to the east yeah now you can play the seven and go to the eight then the four then the six any way you choose playing for five I do like going to the eight here. I think he's got the angle. Well, I mean, he did actually have an angle as well, and he just decided to draw back for the six, and I think he's gotten flat. Yeah, he's gotten flat on this angle, so he's either going to have to stop. Can he stop and cut the 11? Or does he have room to punch? Yeah, he's looking to take the cut on the 11. So I think I would have forced punched that over for the 8 there at minimum. Because you saw the angle the cue ball took. It took to the side rail. It's going at the 4. Not thrilled with his decision there. Yeah, I think you I think you get your maximum out of it if you just shoot the six and stop. <laughs> but he proves me wrong. He had an angle, a topside angle. He cheated it just a bit, force following the cue ball. Two rails. He's done excellent with it. He's playing for three. 
do you draw to the short side and take a cut on the eight here with the four or do you just stop and take the bank uh, he's probably played the right shot here as well and I think he can take the cut on the 11 following this playing for two to advance into round number two he's done that Jesse Engel is going to give this up and lose match number one filler advances to round number two I am your host Scott Frost the freezer thank you all for tuning in to Railbirds TV and we'll see you on the next one